Here we have the passage, it looks very small, only two uh, paragraphs, but then you need to read this at least uh, two times to get the answers to the questions. Why? Because all these questions, uh, most of them are indirect questions. And of course, you can expect similar questions for exam. Okay. Now, the first question is, the writer uses the term culture to refer to. So, before we start with the discussion in detail, let me uh, remind you of this instruction given on the top. See, you have been given a passage with uh, certain questions, but you need to choose the best answer for each uh, question. So, sometimes when you read the options, you may feel that more than one option is possible. Of course, uh, those items are given the passage, but then uh, what you have to do is you have to choose the best possible answer or option for the passage. Okay, like the first one itself, see the writer uses a term culture to refer to. That means uh, what does he mean by culture in accordance with this passage? Okay. So we have been given options like uh, one's acquisition of knowledge. That means culture is it uh, acquiring knowledge? Of course not. So without even uh, reading the uh, passage, we know that it is not uh, the answer. It is not acquisition. It's not uh, educating yourself, right? It is not acquiring or acquisition of knowledge. The way of life of a particular people living together in one place. Let us search for this statement if it is given in the uh, stand, I mean, in the passage, see, uh, where is that? Yeah, the way of, see, this is given, right? The way of life of a particular group of people living together in one place. Of course, we can consider this as the answer. Anyways, uh, like, you know, the definition of culture, isn't it? So this is exactly the definition of uh, the word culture. In fact, that is given directly in the passage. So definitely there is no confusion regarding the first question based on this passage. Okay. Then the second is, second question based on the same passage is, the passage suggests that universal education. Okay. What exactly is universal education? All right. So is it, uh, what do you call, would prevent us from transmitting culture to the future generation? Of course not would help retain the cultural values. Okay, that could be taken as our option. Why? Because see, for this, you need to understand the passage. It is not a direct question. Okay, see, uh, like the first option, what is the meaning of the first option? Uh, it would, or else universal education would prevent from transmitting, us from transmitting culture. Does it prevent? Universal education means does it block the way of uh, transmitting culture of future generation? Of course not. Instead, it would help us retain cultural values. No, it's to be used in a positive sense, right? And not aggravating the existing problems of modern world, not solution to the problems in the modern world. So the second option could be taken as the answer. But remember, you will not get it directly from the passage. You have to understand the whole thing to get this point. You just uh, comprehend things or you infer, you infer thing, not given directly. All right. Next is the culture of a community is set to deteriorate or decline when See, it's given very clearly when family life fails to play its part. Family life fails to play its part. Okay, so this is when uh, culture of a community is said to go down or decline. So this answer is given straight in the passage. The next is the culture of a community is uh, transmitted how is it transmitted? Is it equally by both the family and school or by peer group members or more by school than the family or more by the family than the school? So let us see if we could get, uh, see, yeah, now these are transmitted rather by the family than by the school. That means more by the family than by the school, more by the family than the school. So this is uh, given straight in the passage. So you just need to read it. Next is according to the passage education is this is also an indirect question. Okay, so is it the substitution of old traditions with new ones? Is it does it mean that education will change your uh, old traditions and uh, those traditions will be substituted with new traditions? Of course not. Then the development of 
education not always means developing one's moral standards okay then sharpening of wits is one of the aspects of education that is given the passage but one of the aspects okay but more than that it is you have to choose the best option right so tapping and encouraging the inherent values in man that means you develop you find it out you bring it out and after that you encourage for the development of that inherent values in man or human being so this is exactly what you mean by what is meant by this concept of education okay so one or two questions for that passage had been a little bit out of and this uh, passage is comparatively an easier one all right so the writer based on this it's all about the traveling experience of the writer this is a narrative passage okay this is a narrative one the other one was factual and this is a narrative passage almost like a story the writer felt unusually solitary because was he feeling very lonely without his family see what was the first sentence given the as i stepped out of the train i felt unusually solitary since i was only passenger to a light i was accustomed to arriving in summer when holiday makers uh, throng coastal resorts and this was my first visit that means he was missing the company of other holiday makers so usually he travels when he could find other holiday makers but this time it was not a season of traveling for him and that is the reason why he was missing those holiday makers so this is actually direct question but uh, to get this answer of course you have to read that first uh, paragraph once or twice because other options also similar options also are given okay then i left all signs of habitation behind me what does this mean okay see uh, i guess uh, even without uh, going through the options given as a uh, like uh, yeah as an expression also you know the meaning of this uh, statement i left all signs of habitation behind me so most probably uh, even if you don't refer to, of course you have to refer to the passage uh, from where this is taken but still the meaning of this sentence without even uh, finding the answer from the passage you know what it is right uh, i to leave signs of habitation means to reach a place where people do not live right uh, or deserted area abandoned and deserted area so let us see the options uh, by the way came to a place where there were very few houses that means completely we, we are talking about uh, like uh, completely uh, deserted area so in that sense this cannot be taken then was in front of a large collection of cottages is just the opposite of the statement that also cannot be taken and third option is had come very far from places where people live so this is the appropriate option that we can choose that means i came to a place which was very far from places where people lived so of course this could be taken as our answer all right then uh, next is uh, i became sorry it became it should have been it became darker than the writer so this should be it became so it's just a printing error it became darker than the writer expected because so it was day time but still like uh, the night falls a bit early okay so how uh, or what could be the reason see then i recollected that on previous visits i had walked in high summer and how it was october so during a winter season or else october the nights are longer in october than mid summer evening falls quickly unlike uh, the summer season okay so the nights are longer nights are shorter is just the opposite of the meaning if nights are shorter that means uh, it won't uh, become darker so that is just the opposite in meaning instead the nights are longer in october and that's why he feels that it becomes a bit darker than what he really expected okay this one the writer found it difficult to keep to the path because of let us see if we could uh, get yeah the track was grassy and even in daylight showed up hard that means dim light or not so visible plus the track was grassy the darkness and narrowness of the path no then poor visibility and grassy track of course poor visibility that means things are not visible and grassy track so of course this could be taken as our 
option okay now next is when he settled himself on the fork of the tree the writer okay what happened to him he was tr he tried to sleep i was terrified of hurtling over the edge then i bumped into little dumb then uh, i climbed up the nearest trunk and managed to find a tolerably comfortably fork to sit uh, fork like structure the waiting was spent by my attempts to identify the little stirrings and noises of animal life i could hear i it grew colder and i grew colder and managed to sleep only in uneasy fitful starts that means he tried to sleep but without much success after sitting or settling on the fork of the tree he tried to sleep okay i grew this sentence uh, proves that answer i grew colder and colder and managed to sleep only in uneasy that means i tried to maybe i, I just took a nap otherwise uh, it was not a sound sleep so definitely uh, this fourth option could be chosen i tried to sleep but without much success i was able to sleep a little but not uh, uh, like a sound sleep okay uh we have another passage and uh, here actually you have uh, more of uh, indirect questions okay so uh, of course such uh, passages could be expected for exam so we cannot uh, find an easy one for you uh, so that you would score marks on model exams but since such passages could be expected better to uh, get familiar with such type of passages isn't it so this is the third passage and it's all about uh, culture and uh, crises that we have in culture so definitely it's a pretty uh, like a long passage and you need to read this at least i guess minimum 3 times i guess more time for this exam you have to spend uh, you might have spent more time reading this passage and finding out uh, the answer because most of the questions for this uh, passage had been indirect questions okay like the very first example is given on the board choose the option that best captures the central idea so how uh, like uh, it's it's a kind of complicated question a tricky question of course to get the central idea what should you do you have to read the entire stuff right and that or not just once because just one reading of this passage will not make any head or tail out of it you need to read at least uh, three i guess three times minimum three times okay or else uh, a very elaborate reading two times okay now we have been given a few uh, quotes and you have to choose the best quote which would convey or capture or uh, give you the central idea of this passage okay so let us see what those quotes are jai hind not connected with any uh, culture or such thing so this cannot be taken it's too short a title for this passage then people are trapped in history and history is trapped in them itself is confusing so do not take that also use something sensible which could be connected to the gist of the passage now what about the c1 a nation's culture of course this one speaks something about culture and that is what we have in this passage isn't it a nation's culture resides or lies in the hearts and in the soul of its people quoted by mahatma gandhi so this could be taken as our uh, option third option option c okay next is uh, i guess it's quite visible what is the tone of the following context a change that carries within it a cause of profound tragedy okay uh, where uh, do we find this it's such small in font size that i have to search for it profound 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 okay it's a quote i mean it's a i shall liberal some 19 and the the beliefs of our lord and sentiments of our leaders as to this belief was based upon the fact okay i guess uh, maybe because of this very small uh, writing that it's not that visible Ah yes, actually that is given in the very first paragraph, which I did not notice first. See, isn't that the sentence? What is the tone of the following context? A change that carries within it. Okay, let us see the whole sentence. I am struck by the change that has taken place both in my own attitude and in the psychology of my countrymen. A change, 
a, a, a very like a negative change that carries within it a cause of profound actually profound means something very intense very deep and of course the word tragedy is also used okay so after like uh, after you get the statement you have to read the sentences which precede and after that you get the word meaning and uh, look at the options boredom it's, it doesn't speak about boredom it is not any like being tired or being cheerful of course a thing which cannot be taken see the word tragedy is something which shows or which gives a tone of sadness isn't it so pain and loss with the word tragedy which acts as a clue to your answer you will get the option pain and loss okay sometimes you have to search for such clues uh, to get the exact answer which of the following is relevant for the title of the uh, passage i told you it is all connected with civilization culture problems in culture so it's not a proud to be independent not about happy indians or civilized or not about englishmen but it is like uh, speaking about the crisis or the obstacles or the problems that we have in our civilization or culture okay that is only possible option that we got our or ours was a hurdle in our quest for freedom okay so why is it a hurdle for our quest for freedom is it because we distrusted in the englishman no in fact uh, we as many thought their literature that we formed that ideas and type of learning and uh, at the time through identity attempts were made to gain our national independence as we had not seen at at a heart we had not lost faith in the generosity of the english race this belief was so firmly rooted in the sentiments of our leaders that means we believe that uh, they are uh, they, they we have a blind faith okay we believe that they were really good and that acted as a hurdle in our quest for freedom it's not about distrust actually we trusted them we trusted in their noble minds uh, and not uh, blind this is incomplete what belief this is incomplete words this also cannot be taken we are not uh, like speaking about the fear for englishmen but we have faith in them we believe that they were too good okay we have a faith in them see this sentence proves it at heart we had not lost faith in the generosity we had not lost uh, our faith means we believe we have faith in their generosity and we uh, have a uh, belief that they are really good at heart so that is only option which comes closer to the statement given in the passage okay see there are, you have to search for it uh, otherwise do not expect the exact words uh, from the passage okay which of the following sentences makes correct use of vanquished as uh, used in the passage the soldier uh, did you get that word vanquished i guess uh, when i was searching for the other thing i got it somewhere here but then now it's lost again vanquished vanquished the context in which it is used so that you will be able to substitute it with another okay let us uh, see the first uh, last time also i just skipped the first paragraph and uh, the thing was given in the first paragraph so it was towards the end light hearted uh, not in the last paragraph second last ha ah, see the small word playing hide and seek isn't it okay this belief was so firmly rooted in the sentiments of our leaders as to lead them to hope that the victor would of his own grace pave the path of freedom for the vanquished or trodden okay captured or uh vanquished is the soldier successfully vanquished his rivals suppressed or captured or overpowered overpowered could be a word to use instead of this vanquished vanquished okay so uh, other options he tried to vanquish her fears we need something solid or we need something as objects be courageous to vanquish all evils uh, the best use of the word vanquished in connection with this passage will be the first option the soldier successfully vanquished his rivals okay something materialistic tago felt that uh, englishmen deserved his uh, highest respect because of is that because of their literature no is it because uh, of uh, their providing refuge no their modern outlook no instead their open minded humanity 
okay because of their open minded humanity that we uh, respect them okay they are open minded humanity which word in the passage is closest in meaning to the word deep i guess uh, when we talked about profound tragedy that time itself i said something intense something deep so definitely this word profound is given here right so not perspective or point of view not tragedy not psychology but profound is something deep intense what do you understand from the line attempts were being made to gain national independence at heart we had not lost faith in the generosity of the english race that means okay see we had not lost you don't have to look uh, i mean the search for the sentence in the passage because that's already given there what do you understand what exactly uh, is the meaning of the statement that we uh, like from the line attempts were being made to gain national independence that at heart just take this much part that would be enough at heart we had not lost faith in the generosity of the english race or english men so what exactly is the meaning of that statement see it's given very straight as a first option as intense we did not lose faith in english men not english race was selfish just the opposite right that english men were full of words in what sense i don't understand indians were fighting against generosity no so these options will not make any sense at all instead the very first for this uh, i guess you don't have to go through the passage again to get the answer after all you are asked to give the meaning of uh, the statement given and that meaning is very uh, much visible on the board as a very first option isn't it now the next is the terms large hearted and radical liberalism these are actually the terms used by john bright i guess you might have come across that man john bright okay listen to speeches of john bright both in outside his name is the large hearted see large hearted and radical liberalism of those speeches large hearted radical liberalism of those speeches given by john bright so his name is, of course other people also are mentioned in the passage but not connection with these two words so you have to choose the option john bright so that was the passage given to you and uh, of course uh, most of the questions for that uh, third passage were indirect questions so expect similar passages for your main exam so as far as possible uh, just keep this in your mind you read in case if you find uh, a passage quite uh, complicated spent more time on that okay you you need to spend more time on that because sometimes uh, there is just a thin difference between the right and wrong answer so you need to go through the passage several times to get the answer okay in fact i guess i also spent so much time to find answer to those questions like uh, very close options all right now another set of questions where we have from 21 to 25 out of the four alternatives choose the one which best expresses the meaning of the given word that means you have to search for synonyms okay synonyms you have to find synonyms now the first word is indiscriminate in discriminate not to show difference that means undifferentiated that is uh, given as the first not instant or sensible or discreet but undifferentiated indiscriminate not to be discriminated not to be differentiated okay then literal uh, very often we use this term literally speaking literal etc so uh, by word or another word for that is verbatim verbatim is exact synonym for literal it literal means uh, not uh, for being formal or idealistic or outdated but verbatim means by means of the words or in accordance with the words literally uh, for example uh, like uh, when you uh, try to get the meaning of a word from the context so we use this term literally speaking or the literal meaning of the word okay so that means uh, by word or in accordance with the word given in the context okay now intricate actually is uh, 
complicated intricate intricate structure complicated structure uh, not you you might uh, be a bit uh, like uh, confused I, I use the term confused okay uh, between the two options complicated and puzzling okay so the exact uh, synonym is complicated and why this cannot be taken the reason is puzzling means something confusing okay uh, like uh, something confusing not so clear but complicated is uh, like exact uh, like problems that we have or very very complicated structure so definitely close to the word intricate we have complicated which is the best synonym for the word uh, intricate okay now expeditiously is actually an action which uh, is done very quickly or very rapidly okay so we have been given the option quickly so that could be taken expeditiously means something which is done very uh, like uh, rapidly or quickly sorry one more question was left out idiosyncrasies is uh, is actually not needs or demands or uh, idiosyncrasies that is how you uh, like pronounce this word that means eccentricities or, or peculiarities peculiar features okay eccentricities or the behavior that is the meaning okay now instead of finding synonyms we need to find the opposite or antonym so earlier for the previous set of questions we were asked to find out synonyms right now we have another set of questions from 26 to 30 and you have to find out the opposites or antonyms for the given list of words okay resourcefulness resourcefulness that means uh, whom do you call as a resourceful person it's actually a, a positive quality like you are resourceful means you you have the knack of uh, you have that intelligence or uh, you have that ability to uh, put things into practicality so you have the resource okay and you have the practical minded nature so it's a compliment for given for people it's a positive quality so what we need is not synonym but opposite uh, resource it's not resource it is resourcefulness it is used as an adjective to describe a person okay so this resourcefulness we actually got two options which are equally possible that means even if you choose stupidity or incompetence both are equally correct all right so here we have resourcefulness scarcity is not the opposite of that bankruptcy is also not the opposite why because bankruptcy means you you go bankrupt means you lost all your investment you lost your money and you are you have become a pauper so that is not in a way connected with this word instead stupid you use a resourceful you use your intelligence you are intelligent you are resourceful okay so stupidity is just the opposite your incompetence also is just the opposite so even if you choose stupidity or incompetence both are equally correct okay evolve to start so definitely to stop will be it's just opposite isn't it antiquated antique collection you heard that term antique antique collection ancient something very old so obviously the opposite for antiquated that means ancient will be modern okay pathetic pathetic means very like uh, poor and very miserable and uh, very negative but then the opposite will be comic pathetic situation means very poor situation tragic situation pathetic means tragic situation that would be the best explanation so that you will be getting the exact opposite to that and that is comic okay fastidious is discourteous sorry uh, discourteous discourteous is the opposite fastidious discourteous okay next is questions 31 to 35 in the following 10 questions some parts of not 10 questions but only a few five questions where some parts of the sentences have uh, errors and some are correct uh, you have done similar questions for all the type all uh, the model exams right so here we have uh, a sentence is given to you on the board and uh, it has been 
divided into certain parts and in case if you have any error in any of those parts you have to choose that okay and if there is no error of course you can choose that option no error okay now we we have it uh, divided into she has been is the first part and complaining about headache is the second part and third part is from morning right now this sentence actually is based on a grammatical structure and uh, i guess for the previous exam also this has been explained like uh, when we use the use of for and since see that is repeated now a uh, for is the exact point of time and since is sorry for is period of time and since is point of time okay point of time and period of time okay for five years period of time and uh, since point of time means uh, since 1915 so the, all those are points of time now here look at the sentence again she has been complaining about headache it's written as from morning so that morning it is given as exact point of time plus what is the tense of the structure of the sentence she has been complaining has been complaining is present perfect continuous tense so with present continuous or present perfect continuous tense also we have to use either for or since but here for cannot be used because it's not period of time but point of time given in the sentence so in that sense this from morning part has gone wrong so this first part has gone wrong first means the first option has gone wrong and how will you correct it since it is present perfect continuous tense this is how it goes she has been complaining about headache since morning exact point of time that morning time so if you add instead of from since it would be a correct sentence okay the next is the children left the playground one after one the children left is the first part the playground is the second part and third part is first second and third part so obviously when you read the sentence uh, you may find something wrong with the last part or the third part and that is where we have the error okay so the children left the playground no errors of course one after how will you say that a sentence or how will you complete how will you correct the sentence it is we do not use the term one after one but one after the other instead of that one at the end if you substitute the word with one after the other or the other if you add that at the end it would be corrected okay so the children left the playground one after the other should be the correct uh, uh, sentence and that third part or the first option has gone wrong so this is your answer next is i knew the town well so i was able to advise him where to go you know what like when you read the sentence you may feel that okay there is nothing wrong with that sentence actually there is a wrong one word has gone wrong a very thin difference which you may not notice at the outset you have to read it again to get what exactly has gone wrong okay i knew the town well i knew the town well is the first part so i was able second part to advise him where to go okay i knew the town well so i was able to of course nothing wrong in that part so obviously something has gone wrong with the last part to advise him where where to go now now you get a feeling like that part also is correct so it might be no error of course it's not no error there is something wrong and uh, it's a very small error which had happened but after all an error is an error isn't it so this word advise here it is to be used as a noun to make this sentence a sensible sentence and uh, here it is used as sorry it is to be used as a verb and here it is used as a noun so how will you make it as a verb just change the spelling a d v i s e okay when you use that term advise to denote a noun the spelling is used but here for this sentence what we require is not a noun but a verb so change the spelling make it a d v i s e 
a very small correction and then the answer or else this uh, sentence will be correct. So, the error is in the first part or first option to advise him. Uh, I'll give you another example on the board to make it uh, like understood from the context in which it is used. Uh, like another example is the word practice. Practice as a noun has got this spelling P-R-A-C-T-I-C-E. Practice questions. You're familiar with this uh, word, right? Practice questions. That means in your textbook, you have practice questions. So that is used in the sense of a noun. But if the same word, if you change the spelling a little bit, like substituting that uh, final C as, I mean, with S, and you write the word practice, this is how it becomes a verb. So this is verb and this is noun. Practice game. So if I am asked to use this practice in the uh, like sense of a verb, the sentence will be, you go out and you practice, practice, P-R-A-C-T-I-S-E, practice the game. That means I have used this as a verb. All right. So this is how you will be uh, getting the difference between practice with CE spelling as a noun and with SE spelling as a verb. Exactly the same thing has been or the same theory has been implemented in the sentence given to you as the question. Advice with CE will be a noun but what we require here is a verb so make it SE. A very small error but uh, that is where the answer lies. Okay. Now next is he runs more faster than I. He runs is the first part more faster than I. I guess most of you will have a feeling that uh, he runs more faster than I, that than I might be wrong. We use that term than I, it's not wrong. Don't substitute it with, okay, he runs faster than me. No, than I is already correct. So what has gone wrong is the second part that means more faster. Now you people might be a bit confused why is it wrong right? So the thing is the verb faster you have heard of this uh, positive comparative and three degrees of comparison. Positive, comparative and superlative degrees of comparison. Uh, for example uh, slow or fast okay the, the same word could be given as example. The positive degree of fast, fast, it's positive degree, okay. Then the same word fast, when it becomes faster, you call it as comparative degree. And what is the superlative degree of the same word? It will be fastest, fastest. So positive, comparative, superlative degrees of comparison. Now here we have faster is the comparative degree. He runs more faster than I. So what is wrong with that part? Actually for comparative degree, this more is not required. With words like beautiful, you don't say beautifuler or beautifulest. So for those words we, where we do not have ER or EST form, there we can use more beautiful, most beautiful to show the comparative and superlative degrees of comparison for the word beautiful. Okay, but for other words like tall, tall, taller, tallest, you don't say tall, more taller, most tallest, that is wrong. That means uh, wherever we can use ER and EST, to make it comparative and superlative degrees of comparison, do not use more along with that. Where ER and EST is not possible to be added at the end of the word, only in those places you can use more, more beautiful, most beautiful. That is one example. So this word which is given in this part has made it a wrong sentence. So how will you correct it? So more faster is the uh, answer. This is where it has gone wrong. And uh, you just remove this more. The sentence will be correct. He runs faster than I. Only that much is required. Okay. 
Now, uh, this also has got the similar explanation. The fight for liberation brings out the best and a noblest quality in mankind. A noblest, uh, sorry, you know, the fight for liberation is the first part, brings out the best, okay? And a noblest quality in mankind is the third part, one, two, and three, third part. So the fight for liberation brings out the best. Of course, nothing has gone wrong in those two parts. So something might be wrong in the third part, that is a noblest quality in mankind. Of course, this is the correct answer. You are asked to choose the a wrong a part okay but you should know how to correct it that is additional information a noblest the same theory which we have discussed right now noble nobler noblest with superlative degree a is not used but the is used the fastest the fullest the tallest the shortest so here if it is noblest which is a superlative degree of comparison Instead of A, it should be the. Only then the sentence will be correct. Okay. Now we have uh, a passage, fill the blanks type passage connected. And uh, you have to find the best possible option to fill up the blanks in the passage. It's quite simple. I will always dash the trip. Of course, I'll always remember. Try all other options. It's not I will always be remember or I will always remembering, but I will always remember. Remember the trip I made to the zoo in 1988, past tense. It was then that I dashed measles from one of my friends. It was that time when I, not catching or catch or will catch because we talk about the time in the past, so it should be caught. Okay. So, when that I caught measles from one of my friends, Peter, who had dashed along to, who had not going or go or went, but gone. The third past participle of go is gone. Go, went, gone. With had, see, with had, to make it past participle, the third V3 form, V3 form of go is gone. So, in that sense also, it should be selected. Who had gone along to, before he met us at the zoo, he had gone to visit his cousin who was dashed from measles. Who was recovering. He was just recovering. Was an ING form. Past continuous. Was recovering from measles. The next day, Peter was dash of a sore throat. Peter was not explained or complained. Peter was complained, of course not correct. With was continuous tense, so was complaining was complaining of a sore throat, a bad cold and high fever. When he was diagnosed by a doctor as having measles, his parents rang me up to warm me. It's warm, given here, but it should be W-A-R-N. Warning, given, giving warning, okay. Warn me that I had been dashed to measles too. I had been, past tense, past tense, uh, so exposed, exposed. The only past tense of the word is exposed other things are not given past tense okay had been exposed to measles too by the next uh, day i was also showing or having the same symptoms my doctor dash me to stay at home my da doctor is it my doctor is advised no the doctor is not as advised but the doctor is giving advice right so advised past tense again the whole uh, paragraph is in past tense okay my doctor advised me to stay at home for the next two weeks. I was quite pleased with the doctor's instruction. I spent the time reading story books. Then, of course, listening to, listening, reading, ING. So, listening, ING, listening to music and watching. So, all these in ING form. When I got, when I, yeah, when I get bored, I would call a Peter who also had to spend two weeks at uh, home. This is home, okay. Small, small Printing mistakes, home, comma, for a chat. Unfortunately, the two weeks passed too quickly, not too all mistakes quickly. When we dash to school, when we, uh, the process of coming back or returning, so it's when we returned, when we returned, past tense again, when we returned. When we returned to school, we had to work twice as hard to, hard to dash with our classmates, catch up, catch up with, that means, 
to compete and get along with. So catch up with R with R. Sorry for all these printing errors. Classmates, it was definitely not worth the holiday. So this is how you get the answers. Remember when you have uh, such passage given as fill in the blanks uh, type, you read the entire thing and try to fill up things without even checking for the options. Sometimes you can find the options uh, without even uh, searching for it. And if those options are given, that will be of course your correct answer. All right. Now next is in the following five questions, we have sentences given with blanks to be filled up with appropriate words for options are given. The first one is his profession is teaching but his dash is photography. And we have been given as a vocative, no, vacation, no. Vocation also is somewhat like a profession but a vocation. You might not be that familiar with this word actually. A vocation is a kind of hobby or your passion. So here the meaning of the sentence is, of course, uh, as a, uh, like, uh, according to his profession, he does teaching or he teaches. He is by profession a teacher, but his passion is for photography. To give that sense, you have to use the term avocation. And avocation means uh, a passionate hobby, which is the best word to be used to fill up this blank. Next is, he quarreled with his boss dash of the consequences is it confident of the consequence of course not very devoid but heedless heedless means in spite of knowing even after knowing okay so he quarrel or else not bothered that would be the best explanation uh, like least bothered about the consequences even if he knows that to fight with his or to quarrel with his boss would end up in die consequences but he knew that beforehand but even after that he argued with his boss that is the meaning conveyed with the sentence so to fill up with this you have to use heedless to make it a sensible sentence next is as the driver swerved violently at the turning the wheel came off as it was already of course there is no doubt l o w s e loose okay not lost or loss or loss Almost similar in meaning, this is a word which we require. Some verbs need a dash to convey the full meaning. Some verbs, okay verbs, some verbs need a dash to convey means something in addition. An additional thing to convey. Let us see the options. Compliment here is giving praise. Complimentary. That also will not make that full sense, but compliment. Compliment are those supplies which we use in addition or almost like helping, helping. You've heard of those auxiliary verbs or helping verbs. So that is the exact meaning. Some verbs require auxiliary or helping verbs to convey the full meaning. And those auxiliary verbs are actually compliments or supplies or extra supplies. So this is the correct option. Now the last question on the board is the demonstration passed off without, without much problem or without uh, much incident. This is the term to be used, not coincidence. You know what coincidence is? Incident means a particular incident or event. Accident is not to be used. All right. So these are the options which we cannot uh, use for this sentence. The demonstration of people might be passed off or it went of without much problem, without any complicated problem. And to show that uh, meaning, we have to use the term incidence. Okay. So I guess it was uh, quite an easy paper, except uh, for the fact that you had one passage, which is a bit tough, right? But then, of course, you have to practice such uh, passages. Similar passages could be expected. So next time also, if we have more passages in number, you read it twice at least to get the meaning. So we will meet uh, very soon with uh, another set of uh, questions. Okay, so till then you can take care. See you soon. Thank you.